weekend. Good start. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, Beaver, I leaned over to Lance McMahon about the third inning and I said, Lance, we haven't seen this kid practice because <laughs> she was throwing gas, hitting every spot possible. And I just think she put on the uniform, got out there, and it was like superwoman all of a sudden. And we knew she's capable, but man, she was terrific. Um, probably was hitting 70. They didn't have a radar gun, so we weren't sure. But extremely hard for seven innings, obviously through the no-hitter. Um, it was just awesome to see and a great start for her and for our team. We had three key hits and that was it. Villanova played really well. Their pitcher was good. She had a, a nasty drop ball on the outside corner that she consistently hit, hit, hit. Um, but then after that, I thought our team defense was awesome. I think I told you guys this two weeks ago that this was the most athletic team we've ever had. And you saw the three plays in the outfield. Jen over here, Lauren in the center, and then Larissa's to end the tournament was unbelievable. Uh, Kenley played great defense. Callie Heaven played great, played great defense. The two catchers were awesome. Um, threw, I think, two out of three out. And um, just all around, it was just fun to watch. I think you said last week something about Bro was like even better as a coach than you thought it was going to yeah. be. Is that kind of what we saw on opening weekend? Or we didn't get to see a lot of it? Yeah, what you I don't saw? know. I hope so. Um, I mean, obviously. <laughs> You have a bunch of green light girls that are outfielders, so that means number one, they're fast. But like a lot of times when, especially at the beginning of the year, you, you, you get to the ball, but then it tips out or drops it. And we've always said from day one, the coach should not say, oh, Katie, great try. No, catch the ball. And they all did, all three of them. And Larissa's was just a hell of a catch because it was obviously bases loaded, no outs, seventh inning, the whole thing and banged into the wall and still held on. And then also, after we watched the replay, I mean, immediately she turned around and whipped it to Kinley at second base, stepped on second for the double play, and then we tried to get the triple play at third, but, um, you know, they went to replay. And I don't know if you guys heard all that, but... Oh, yeah. Um, so there was a replay, and then there was a second replay, um, a review. Um, so, anyway, it was pretty, just a... Pretty close. Yeah, it was just a held an inning to a great game. Murph, if Jenna had not been here, would you have still found and recruited Lauren? Oh, yeah, yeah. She was um, that good. Well, she's just three hours away, too. You know, and that's a team that we've watched forever, her summer ball team, the Curie. And we know the coaches. We've known them for probably 20 years. Uh, so definitely would have seen her because they play in tournaments in Birmingham, Atlanta, Chattanooga. So it's a team that uh, most coaches in the South know who they are. Has she progressed quicker than you thought since absolutely. she's been here? Oh, absolutely. You know, and we told the team that if if we re-voted, we, we name a most improved player in the fall. So from start to finish. And the team votes, the coaching staff votes, uh, the athletic trainer, the strength coach, everybody gets a vote. And it's kind of a cool uh, award. You know, they don't get anything, it's just the title. But um, before we left for Georgia Tech, uh, the coaches met, you know, daily and I said, man, if we voted today, my vote might be Lauren Johnson for most improved from July because she came to Italy with us. So July 10th to whatever it was, February 6th. Um, she's just a sponge. You know, and the cool thing about her, you know, you know, she's a freshman, but she has no socks in the top drawer. She doesn't give a rip who we're playing. Um, she just goes out and competes and doesn't worry about all the other stuff. Who did get most improved? When you voted um, in the fall. Abby Dukeshire. Okay. And she well, earned it too. She and she did great. Too. She hit 471 and she was a beast in the three spot. Coach, did you do have to do much recruiting for Lauren or did her sister and her uh, family do much of that for you? A little bit. Uh, I remember when they when they came on the official visit, it's obviously we knew the family and we loved the family and the look the twin sister, Alyssa, is at Alabama too. So it's Lauren and Alyssa are both freshmen, and then Jen is a senior. So there's three Johnsons at Alabama right now. Um, but we offered her on a Saturday morning, and we had a football game that day. Uh, and we leave the clubhouse. We walk through our little parking lot in front of the building, walk across the street, get on the bus to go to the game. And she taps me on the shoulder, Lauren, and says, I want to come here. <laughs> so it took her about five minutes to talk mom and dad into saying yes. 
and uh, it, it just, it's just a great family, and I'm so glad that both of them are here. Can you, uh, looking ahead now to uh, this weekend, tell us a little bit about the teams coming in? So UVA, Virginia, um, obviously Power 5, ACC. Uh, coach used to be at McNeese State. She did a great job at uh, McNeese and went to a couple of NCAA tournaments, and I believe that her family is from Virginia area, so that's why she went. She kind of went back home. Um, they played a really good tournament this weekend. I just, you know, they'll be a, a good ACC opponent. St. Thomas, Minnesota uh, is an interesting story as well. Um, I'm familiar with their softball program from a couple years ago, but their old head coach was one of my best friends in softball, and they were D3. And I don't know if you guys know this story, but they dominated their conference in D3 in Minnesota, and all the other teams in that league said, get them the hell out of our league because they beat everybody in every sport. So the school said, okay, we're going to go Division One," And they went Division One maybe three or four years ago. And it's, you know, it's taken a little while because Division Three is non-scholarship. So all these kids were either on academic or, or uh, uh, aid. And um, so eventually, I think it's going to be a really good program because it's the only second uh, Division One program softball-wise in Minnesota other than the University of Minnesota. Uh, and they hired a new coaching staff. Um, so it'll be fun to play somebody different. They've never been here. And then Southern Indiana also, and St. Thomas won four or five Division Three national championships. And then Southern Indiana won the Division Two national championship. And I'm not sure why they went Division One, but they decided to go Division One as well. And the lady that was the coach for the national championship still is with them, and she's been a friend forever. And uh, so they're coming down and they've never been here. So it's um, actually, I don't think we've ever played Virginia, definitely not here. So it's three teams that have never been to the Rhodes house. So hopefully uh, we get all the games in and the weather's good. So talking about being back at the Rhodes house last week, I think you said something about the, the change up there. Right? Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about yeah. that? So the change you've made to the stadium this they're gonna, Those were TV stands for the Brickyard people because they couldn't see the scoreboard and they were indoor outdoor TVs, but they're gonna cut those stands down. And there's eight, eight by 10, plots i don't know what we're going to call it but um it's this year it's going to be first come first serve so if you want to come with seven family members and you want to sit there you bring eight lawn chairs and literally it's right on the field behind obviously the, the warning track um, petco park in san diego that's where i got the idea i recruited out there a couple summers ago and they have it almost half the fence is see-through with no pad and they have this gigantic sandbox for kids. And then they, they have chairs everywhere in the outfield beyond. And it's, it's just like this family atmosphere and it's a party. And um, I really thought it'd be a cool idea. And it's not gonna restrict any brickyard uh, I, or seeing because it's um, below them. So it won't be in their uh, sight line. So um, we'll see how it goes. And hopefully those, there'll be some people out there biggest thing you think you learned about your team this past weekend? Um, I don't know. The pitching staff was so good, too. You know, I think the team ERA was like .6. The defense was great. We had only one error, and originally the Georgia Tech scorer called it a hit. And, you know, you know how that goes. It's like, you know, they might have looked at a replay or whatever, but one error in five games at a .6. ERA is pretty darn good anywhere. I don't care who you're playing to. Uh, so we mixed and matched a lot of the uh, pitchers. Hopefully uh, Salter will get to pitch this weekend. She had a little bit of a uh, wrist issue, but she should be fine. She, she'll definitely be on a pitch count. Um, and then depending on how it goes uh, this week, practice-wise, uh, Kristen White could get back out there as well. So we did, I mean, we did all that without Kristen too and Lojo. You know, she kind of takes over, and then she's the SEC Freshman of the Week. So it's a cool story. Good? Good. Thank you. Appreciate it.